This is improving signal-to-noise performance in hydroacoustic monitoring systems through the use of FM slide. This presentation will focus on the benefits of a specific echo sounder pinging technique, FM slide signal, over the conventional method of pinging, CW signal. Most acoustic echo sounders used for fisheries studies employ CW, or tone burst, pulse signals. With this type of signal, the user must trade off spatial target resolution with output signal to noise, which determines the maximum useful range. CW is short for continuous wave, a constant amplitude and frequency signal, called tone burst because the signal produced has a constant frequency, which creates a single pitch or tone. Alternatively, one can use a wideband signal such as an FM slide to simultaneously maximize spatial resolution and range. FM being short for frequency modulated. The pitch or tone of this signal varies with time over a range. This presentation shows how the FM slide signal achieves an, this improved performance and presents laboratory measurements and field results that illustrate its advantages. Spatial resolution is proportional to echo sounder output pulse width, tau. Single echo isolation requires good spatial resolution, where single echo isolation required for in situ target strength estimation and echo counting fish tracking. Reverberation level scattering from surface bottom or objects in the water, is proportional to spatial resolution, delta R. Therefore, reverberation is minimized by minimizing delta R. C times tau is a distance, and the reason why the minimum spatial resolution is that distance halved is shown in this somewhat simple animation. Here are a dotted yellow line and a dotted red line representing targets that are C tau over 2 distance apart. As a ping approaches each target, when it meets the target, it reflects a ping back, reflects acoustic energy back to the transducer. If the objects are the distance C tau over 2 apart or less, their returning echo overlap one another and cannot be distinguished. Effects of noise on acoustic assessment systems a source of, are a source of bias and variance for in situ target strength measurement. Noise adversely affects single, single iso, echo isolation. Noise introduces bias and variance errors in the abundance estimates obtained using echo integration. And the useful operating range of any practical fisheries or plankton acoustic assessment system is limited by the available signal to noise ratio or SNR. Some methods for improving SNR are to decrease noise sources such as better electronics, reduced flow noise, increased transducer directivity, etc. to increase the energy and transmitted signal and to decrease the output noise by decreasing the bandwidth. Depending on the application it can be difficult to achieve both a sufficient signal to noise ratio and high signal target detection resolution using a CW pulse echo sounding system. In CW systems, optimizing single target detection resolution requires the use of short duration transmitted pulses as you just saw. Signal energy in a transmitted pulse and in the received echoes is proportional to the pulse duration. Shorter pulses have less energy, resulting in reduced signal to noise ratio and a diminished maximum sampling range. The use of longer pulse durations increases signal-to-noise ratio and thus range, but diminish the ability to resolve single scatterer echoes, which reduces the spatial resolution. So as a review, a short pulse or narrow pulse width will give you reduced detection range but improved spatial resolution in a CW system. And a long burst or wide pulse width signal will give you improved detection range but reduced spatial resolution. So there is a choice to be made with CW pulses between resolution or range. However, the technique of FM slide allows for increased resolution and range over CW systems. An FM slide signal are more widely used in radar, military, and bathymetric mapping hydroacoustic applications to provide precise ranging 
and to optimize signal-to-noise ratio. This technique can be employed for the same purposes in narrowband fisheries research, echo sounders. Data collection improvements are only recognized in the presence of non-reverberant noise, but there isn't a downside with respect to employing FM slide signals. The method is transparent to the user and echo amplitudes. Target strength and integration results are equivalent to these derived from CW signals of the same output pulse duration. This technology certainly isn't new. Near the end of World War II, Navy radar system engineers developed the FM slide to improve performance. The Navy still uses this technique today to improve range and resolution. So what is an FM slide signal? It is a combination of the benefits of long pulse widths and short pulse widths. Extended range is realized through the use of wide transmit pulse where the frequency is varied linearly over time, i.e. swept, within the pulse. Higher spatial resolution is achieved by compressing the echo returns to narrow output pulses using cross-correlation techniques, such as the use of a matched filter to compress the pulse in time and increase it in amplitude. Here we have an illustrative example of the differences between narrow pulse width, wide pulse width, and FM slide chirp signals. For a narrow pulse width, spatial resolution is high, but range, because of the lack of signal-to-noise ratio, is reduced. For wide pulse widths, range is increased because of the wide pulse and the amount of energy that can be put into a, a ping of that nature, but resolution is limited. An FM slide or chirp signal has the benefits of both. Here is a typical example of how a CW system produces a pulse. The bandpass filter, BW, corresponding to the minus 3 dB spectral bandwidth for a tone burst pulse of duration capital T, is bandwidth equals 1 over T. With this bandwidth, the input pulse width, capital T, equals the output pulse width, tau. In other words, what you see is what you get. You'll also note that the signal to noise ratio is dependent on tau, not capital T, though in this case they are the same. The FM slide signal is produced slightly differently. First, the pulse is created with a range of frequencies. This pulse goes through a quadrature demodulator and a matched filter, with the resulting signal being width being tau is 1 over bandwidth, not tau equals capital T. This is the effect of being able to create small pulse widths by having a large sweep bandwidth, while still being able to put a large amount of power into the signal from width T. These figures show how a matched filter affects an, a frequency modulated pulse. These figures show how a matched filter affects a frequency modulated pulse. The incoming pulse has some length capital T and a constant amplitude. The bottom left shows that over time the frequency is swept from low to high. The filter then takes each frequency and delays the time of the output as shown in the top right figure. The resulting output has been compressed to tau being 1 over the bandwidth of the signal. As an example, the spatial resolution of a 5 millisecond CW signal and a 5 millisecond 10 kilohertz FM slide signal, both having the same power, are 3.75 meters and 0 0.075 meters. This shows that with the same power, an FM slide signal has a much finer spatial resolution. Likewise, a CW signal and an FM signal with the same spatial resolution vary in power. The output power of a CW signal has to be 50 times that of an FM signal of the same spatial resolution to have the same signal-to-noise ratio. 
This is a 17 dB increase when using an FM slide signal over a CW pulse. However, the filter does have an unusual effect on an FM slide signal and that side lobes form around the pulse. This can be dealt with with a windowed match filter which clears the pulses around the center that are not the main lobe. In terms of the data, this is what a ping looks like returning from using an FM slide signal. Originally, the programmers at HTI that saw this data thought that there was some bug and tried to fix it. However, this is simply a feature of the FM slide signal. The lobes that you saw around the, the main lobe reflect off the target as well and return with lower voltage returns. Available chirp options in the HDI system are as follows. Seen under pulse type are the options to select a normal continuous wave or chirp FM slide signal for pinging. Theoretical versus actual PW is altered due to roll off a physical system is analog, not on-off. It takes time for voltages, which drive the system, to ramp down. Ramping down takes far longer than ramping up. Also, the windowing filter applied to a and a Fourier transform spread the signal out. This set of graphs shows conditions where FM and CW pulses of similar output pulse widths differ in their detectability. The top two figures here show the output pulse width and the resulting detection of a CW pulse. The bottom two show the output pulse and the resulting detection from an FM slide. Here, clearly all return signals can be detected. However, as the power of the output signal is reduced, the system can no longer resolve the returning echo in the CW, but can still clearly resolve the returning echo in an FM slide. Here is a chart of signal to noise level affecting range when comparing a CW pulse and an FM slide signal. The clear division of where the the range is increased is when pinging was changed from tone bursts to FM slide, dramatically increasing the range of detectability. Here is a similar chart but instead of a paper chart, this is in digital echo processor, you can see that the 200 kilohertz FM slide outperforms the 200 kilohertz CW pulse when it comes to range and resolving targets. The reason why these figures seem blocky is that this was collected live and is displaying live and the data is binned in some time and spatial width. Here is a setup where an FM slide chirp was required for the study. The toe body here houses 10 transducers, 5 up facing and 5 down facing. The purpose of the study was to look at small, tightly grouped zooplankton, which would require a short bull pulse CW to resolve. However, the ranges required of the study prevented such a short burst, short pulse width CW from being a viable option due to the signal loss, especially for high frequencies required for detecting small targets. In order to compensate for this, the group decided to go with an HTI system with FM pulse, as HTI is, as far as I am aware, the only fisheries acoustic company using this technology. 
This allowed for longer ranges due to signal-to-noise ratio increases and fine resolution target detection due to short pulse widths. In conclusion, the FM slide signal provides a method to obtain both good spatial resolution and high noise immunity in acoustic assessment systems. The advantages this provides to acoustic assessments are better single echo isolations for echo counting and in situ target strength estimation, lower bias and variance in both in situ target strength and echo integration density estimates, and extended operating range for acoustic systems sampling in noise limiting environments. As I showed earlier, up to 17 decibels of additional processing gain can be realized, extending useful range by a factor of up to two and a half times that of a CW pulse. Some remaining challenges or questions about FM slide are adding additional FM slide output pulse width values and exploring refinement to pulse width windowing and filtering methods to extend the utility of the method in HTI equipment. To document and extend information describing FM slide chirp implementation to facilitate use of the technique in other instruments. And to publish experimental data validating equivalent output metrics with CW systems under high signal to noise ratio conditions. Thank you for listening to this presentation.